Hi, my name is Charlie Ellis. During the next few minutes, I'd like for you to consider a very important question. What is the purpose of my life? Why was I created? It's really amazing how many people will go through life without ever truly discovering who they are, why they're here. If you want to truly discover who you are, why you're here, you must begin with God. You see, you were created by God and for God. It's only in God that we discover our origin, our identity. It's only in God that we discover our true meaning, our purpose. It's only in God that we discover why we're here and where we're going. God created you to love you and enjoy a relationship with you. I want you to understand that no one will ever love you more than God. But most people never accept God's love for them. Why is that? Well, here's the problem. We all have the natural desire to be the boss of our life. We refuse to follow God's purpose for our life. But did you know rejecting God and rejecting His will for your life is a sin? And the Bible says that we all are guilty of this prideful attitude. That's what keeps us from having a close relationship with God. This attitude of trying to run our own life, it causes us to fear God, causes us to feel separated from God's love. You see, the Bible tells us we all have sinned and come short of God's will for our life. Notice it says all. That includes you and me and everyone. We all have blown it. We all have made mistakes. No one is perfect. God really wants to have a loving relationship with you. He wants to spend eternity with you in heaven. But here's the problem. God is perfect. Heaven is a perfect place. And as I mentioned earlier, no one here is perfect. So how can we ever hope to have a relationship with a perfect God and later live in a perfect place? Some people think that since they had a mother or a father or grandparent that was a Christian, they will automatically become a member of God's family and somehow he'll just let them into heaven. Others say it really doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. But the problem is you can sincerely be wrong. I could pick up a glass thinking that it was full of water and it's full of poison. And if I drank it, I would be sincerely dead. It takes more than sincerity to know God. You must come to God God's way. Some think that God has a scale and he places all the bad things I've done on one side and all the good things I've done on the other side. And at the end of my life, if the good outweighs the bad, then maybe he'll let me into heaven. But that's not going to work. Because the Bible says good works will not take anyone into heaven. So you may be thinking, wow, how can anyone have a chance of having a relationship with God and, and an opportunity to go to heaven? Well, I've got good news for you. I've got great news for you. God has a wonderful and simple plan. We get to go to heaven on someone else's ticket. Someone that was perfect. And that perfect person is Jesus Christ, God's Son. Jesus himself said this. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Notice Jesus did not say, I might be the way. He didn't say, I point to the way. He didn't say, I teach the way. I've studied most major religions of the world, and I've found that some of them point to some truth. The Hindu religion says that truth is difficult to find. At the end of his life, Buddha said, I'm still searching for the truth. And Muhammad said, I point to the truth. But Jesus said, I am the truth. Not that I point to it, or teach it, or search for it. I am the truth. The Bible clearly says that Jesus will set you free. There are three simple steps to receive Jesus as the truth. Number one, I admit. I admit that God has not been first place in my life. I admit that I need forgiveness for all my sins. Number two, I believe. I believe that Jesus paid my total sin debt and he rose again and he's alive today. You see, someone has to pay for all the things I've done wrong. When you're caught breaking the law, you pay the penalty. You break God's law when you pay God's penalty. And the Bible says the penalty of sin is death. Eternal separation from God in hell. But the good news is this. Jesus died for your sin. The Bible says if you will confess your sins and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that is a certainty. And God cannot lie. He always keeps his promise. So first, I admit. Second, I believe. Number three, I receive. I receive God's free gift of salvation. The Bible says it is by grace that you're saved through faith and not of yourselves, not of works, so that no one can boast. Can you imagine what it would be like in heaven if people got there by their good works? Everyone would be bragging. But the Bible teaches we're not saved by good works, we're saved by grace through faith. Now what does it mean to accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Lord means manager, director, the one in charge. 
You ever seen a sign in front of a store that says, Under New Management? Jesus becomes the new manager of my life. I'm no longer the one calling the shots. He is the director, the CEO, the one in charge. I have now been a follower of Jesus Christ for well over 40 years. I want you to know that there are still things in the Bible that I don't understand. Thank God I don't have to have it all figured out to have a relationship with God. There's a lot of things about life I don't understand. For example, I don't understand how the digestive system works. But that doesn't stop me from eating. And I don't understand why God does some things and why he permits some things. There are times when I still have doubts. Many years ago, when Jesus lived on this earth, a man came to Jesus who had a very sick child. And this father wanted Jesus to heal him. And Jesus asked this father a very simple question. Do you believe that I can heal your son? And the father answered the best way that he could, and he simply said this. Now listen to what the father said. I want to believe, but help me with my unbelief. Help me with my doubts. To Jesus, that was good enough. He healed the boy right on the spot. And you can pray that same prayer. Lord, I want to believe. Help me with my doubts. You don't have to have it all figured out to accept Jesus into your life. About 40 years ago, Linda and I stood before a group of people, and I spoke two words that changed my life forever. I said, I do. I didn't understand what it meant to be married. I did not understand everything that would be expected of me. I had doubts if I would ever become a good husband. But I spoke those two words because I loved Linda, and I knew she loved me, and I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. Thank God my doubts did not keep me from saying, I do. I want you to understand that God knows your doubts. He knows your thoughts all the way back to when you were born. Maybe your doubts have kept you from becoming a Christian. You do not have to have it all figured out to become a part of God's family. Maybe you're thinking, I don't know if I can live a Christian life. There's things in my life that's just not right. I'll get my life all cleaned up and then I'll come back to God and then maybe he will accept me. You need God in your life now to begin to help you to get things cleaned up. He will accept you just as you are if you will accept Him. If you're not sure where you will spend eternity, I'd like to have the privilege of helping you settle that right now, once and for all. I want you to bow your head and pray this prayer with me from your heart. Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I realize now that I need you in my life. I am sorry for my sins. The things I've done that I know about, the things that I don't even know about. I ask you to forgive me and cleanse my life. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Please come into my life and make me a new person. Dear Lord, the best that I understand, I now accept your free gift of salvation. One that I know I will never deserve, but I accept it. Amen. The Bible says this, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let me repeat that. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The best that you could, the best that you understood, did you just do that? If you just accepted Jesus as your Savior, you are saved. It doesn't matter how you feel. Feelings will come and go. What matters is God never lies. He always keeps His promise. After Linda and I got married, I want you to know that there was times that I doubted her love for me and my love for her. There were even times I did not even feel married. But I was. There will be days that you may not feel saved, or even close to God, but feelings will come and go. What matters is God has promised to save you. But remember, you don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have it all straightened out to accept Jesus and begin a wonderful relationship with Him. May God be with you.